Okay, what we're going to talk about first is we're going to talk about the light-dependent reaction. It's the first stage in photosynthesis. And what we have here is we have the thylakoid membrane and the protein stations that are stuck into it. In the middle of the thylakoid membrane, we have a space called the lumen. And the thylakoid itself floats inside the chloroplast. Outside the thylakoid is an area called the stroma. And we've got a whole variety of uh, protein structures, and I'll talk about those as I go down. But here's what happens. First thing that happens is a beam of light comes down, and it's going to strike one of the photosystems in the uh, thylakoid membrane. And this photosystem is called photosystem 2. I'm going to abbreviate it as PS2. As soon as PS2 is struck by light, the chemicals resonate, they shake, and they shake out an electron. And this electron is extremely high energy, because it was high energy to begin with, but it's just been struck by light and knocked out. So it is as hot and active as it can possibly get. Well, that changes the nature of this chemical right here. What this chemical now does is it realizes that in order to get its balance back, it needs another electron to replace the one that was shaken out. It has the capability, now that it's missing an electron, of doing something remarkable, and that is splitting water that's found inside the lumen of the thylakoid. Water is broken down into its constituent parts, hydrogen, we'll do two molecules of water and oxygen. The oxygen diffuses out immediately and leaves the plant through the stomata and then goes into the atmosphere and that's the reason we've got oxygen in our atmosphere today. The hydrogen accumulates in the lumen and the more light that comes down, the more water that is split, the more oxygen is given off, and the more hydrogen that is accumulating. Well this electron is now free falling and it falls ne next door onto an electron carrier. And I'm going to change this electron carrier shape just so we remember it a little better. I'm going to turn it into a taxi cab because it's going to carry this electron to another lo location. So electron carrier. When the electron strikes the electron carrier and gets passed to the next protein, it also has an interesting effect. It moves hydrogen from the outside to the inside of the lumen, and so now not only do I have hydrogen splitting water, but now I'm pumping hydrogen with this electron carrier. The electron carrier moves the, elect the electron over to the next protein, and this protein is like, oh, an oil pump. But what it does is it pumps hydrogen from the outside. So now I'm getting a lot of hydrogen in here. I'm splitting water, the electron carrier is pumping it in, this pump right here is pumping it in because it's powered by the electron. Now this electron, every time it runs a pump, gets tired. It loses some of its energy. So by the time it runs this big pump here, which moves a lot of hydrogen in, it is tired. And this tired electron can barely move its tired behind over to the next electron carrier. I'm going to turn this guy into a taxi cab too, since we'll remember that what these guys do is they move it. So this guy takes a ride on this electron carrier and is passed over to this uh, photosystem here. This photosystem is known as PS1, photosystem 1. If you'll remember from yesterday, it's called PS1 because this whole molecular system was recognized first. It was identified, and then this one was discovered, and they kept them in the number order as, the, as they were discovered. Well, what happens here is this tired electron uh, crawls into this, into this photosystem, and a beam of light comes down and hits this photosystem. And now this tired electron 
which has barely made it in here, is catapulted out by the energy provided here into a form my best superhero form. Use S, put the big red S on his chest, paint his cape red, and let's put some fiery orange just to show that this guy is now extremely high energy. Well, this high energy fellow right here now jumps into another taxi cab another electron carrier, and it is carried from photosystem one over to this protein right here, which I'm going to give a name to. It's called ferrodoxin. Ferrodoxin has a unique capability. This electron is grabbed by this protein, and it is jammed into the bottom of a dead battery. It's a chemical dead battery. And this dead battery is called NADP. I'm going to draw a skull here, just to show that it's dead. But as soon as that electron joins it with a negative charge, a hydrogen with a positive charge also <laughs> jumps on board, NADP. But now this is a positive one, NADPH. This is a very live battery. And it is heading out further into the stroma to go to the Calvin cycle. Meanwhile, the hydrogen that's been accumulating has been looking for a way to get out. And this hydrogen right here finds the way out through this hole right here and escapes back into the stroma. As you might guess, it's going to be pumped back in eventually by these proteins down here. As this hydrogen leaves, it turns this molecule, which is called ATP synthase. It's called ATP synthase, and it grabs a dead battery version. I'm going to draw the skull and crossbones there. And it grabs phosphate from your dinner, puts them together, they both grab in here, and as this rotates mechanically, it puts them together into a molecule of ATP, which is extremely high energy. And it's a battery now which also goes to run the Calvin cycle. So in recap, light comes down, hits photosystem one, Photosystem 1 ejects a high energy electron. This molecule now wants to replace that electron, so it splits water. Oxygen is given off, hydrogen accumulates. This electron is transferred on an electron carrier, pumping hydrogen into the lumen as it goes. Finally, the electron, which has low energy, is carried to PS1, which is struck by a beam of light, energizing it. And this high energy uh, electron is then carried over to ferrodoxin which plugs it into a low energy molecule called NADP. NADP then attracts an electron, the electron and the hydrogen becomes NADPH and it goes to run the Calvin cycle. Meanwhile, the hydrogen, which is accumulating and colliding with each other, finds an escape route through ATP synthase, which mechanically rotates and then brings a, a molecule, a low energy molecule of ADP and PI from your diet together forming ATP, which is a high-energy molecule that also goes to power the Calvin cycle. Thanks.